Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today we're actually going to start dealing with the language. Rather than just showing you, you know, this is sort of how C++ works, I'm going to show you some actual constructs. I'm going to show you how you can actually do some computing in C++ and write a realistic program. I'm going to give you the tools you need for that. So, first off, when you think of a computer, what does a computer ultimately do? It processes information. That's the ultimate task a computer does with anything. And no matter what it's doing, in some form or another, it's processing information, right? Right. So, it only makes sense that C++ would provide some... Uh, well, I don't want to say operators, but... provide some tools for being really good at both processing and somehow storing information. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The tools for storing information are called variables, and the tools for actually doing processing are called operators. So... Let's go ahead and get started. First up, I want to talk about variables. And what variables do, predictably, is they're the information part. They're what stores the information. They're like, if you think of your computer's memory as this giant warehouse, it has all these boxes in it. What a variable is, is it's just a box. And what the variable does, it stores something in the box. So. What exactly constitutes a variable? A variable only has three things to it. First off, it has a name. Because, think about it, it's in a warehouse. There's millions and millions of variables. You need some way of telling, hey, this means this box, not the other two million boxes in the warehouse, you know? So it's just an identifier, and you can name it whatever you want. That's one of the fun parts of programming. Now, there, you can argue what makes a good name and what doesn't make a good name. Like, for example, if you're making, say, I don't know, I want to calculate my taxes. You know, I want to calculate how much I finally owe my taxes. It, it might make sense to call that tax amount and not something like dinosaur babies. Y you know, but hey, if you really want to call your tax payment dinosaur babies, go ahead. No one's stopping you. It's probably not the best idea, especially if you're working on a group project. You'd probably want to call it tax amount so they don't have to keep remembering dinosaur babies? What? What is he talking about? Yeah, you get the idea. So yeah. So name. You can name a variable basically anything you want. There's only two rules to naming. Well, I say two rules, but I don't think exactly two rules, but they're very simple rules. You can start your variable with either underscore or a letter. Any letter you want. And then after that, you can still have letters or underscores, but you can also have numbers. So yeah, using these three things, you can construct variable names. You can't start them with numbers, you can start them with underscores or letters, but yeah, there you go, that's how you name your variables. And the only other real thing to that is, you can't name your variable a, a C++ keyword, like, for example, using a namespace, which I highlighted in the wrong order, but you get the idea. It, they're C++ keywords, if I tried creating a variable called using, well, C++ won't be very happy about that. It, it'll try to think, oh, he's trying to use, but he's trying to declare a variable? Well, yeah, it's not going to be happy about that, so you, you don't want to do that. But, but other than that, you can name it literally anything you want. So that's naming variables. That's the first part of the variable. Now the next part. What's the next part of the variable? Well, it's called the type. And essentially this gives you some hint as to what's stored in the box. It doesn't tell you, give you it doesn't exactly give you this is what is stored in the box, but it's sort of what type of thing is stored in the box. Like, is this variable storing a number? Is it storing a letter? Is it storing a giant samurai robot ninja with a chain gun? I mean, what's it storing? What's its type? What type of thing is this box holding? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's variable type. And there's a few different variable types. The big ones I'll go over pretty quickly. The, without a doubt, the biggest one is the integer, which we just abbreviate as int. And an int is any positive or negative number without decimal places. And also falls in the range of negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. But for the most part, that's any number you're realistically going to encounter. Not in all cases, but in most cases. So for the most part, it's just any positive or negative number. That's definitely the biggest variable. It can't hold decimal places, but hey. Most times you don't need decimal places. Most times, like, say, I want to count how many stupid tax forms I have to fill out. You know, if I said 
oh yeah, I have to fill out 3.510 tax forms. And yes, I did just read the version number. I'm so creative. <laughs> but, it, you know, that doesn't make much sense. It, especially when you add extra decimal places after the decimal place, like I did there. But, you know, you get the idea. It would make sense to have decimal places for that. That's why it's important to distinguish end. Of course, if you do want decimal places, there's this type of variable called the double. And, predictably, it's kind of like the integer, except it stores numbers with decimal, with decimal places. And you can also store extremely large numbers, but, you know, for the most part, you use these if you want something with decimal places. So, you might be wondering, why on earth do they call it a double? That doesn't make much sense. Well, the reason they call it a double actually has to do with this IEEE standard out there. And the, the IEEE standard uh, has, it specifies a whole bunch of things about how you store numbers with decimal places properly in computing. And it's an interesting read. You can read it sometime if you're really into how floating point numbers work. But one important thing is precision. How precise do I have to represent? How many decimal places do I have to have? How accurately do I have to represent the number? And double means it's twice the precision specified by that standard. So yeah. So you're getting a pretty accurate number here. It can hold, you can have a, about 15 decimal places and still be, and still count on them being accurate. At some point, the accuracy sort of starts to break down, but that's another topic for another time. For the most part, they're decimal numbers. That's all you really need to know about these. There's also two slightly more interesting variables, I guess you could say. One is called the Boolean, which we abbreviate as just Bool, named after George Bool. This is for Boolean algebra. It stores values that are either true or false, simply enough. And you can do some interesting things with this. But yeah, it's the Boolean value. You... I'm not going to go too much into it in this video. And there's also another variable which I'm not going to talk too much about in this video, called the character, which we abbreviate as just car, because, you know, C++ loves abbreviations. And predictably enough, this stores a single character, whether it be a letter, a number, some strange, wacky symbol of some kind. You know, doesn't matter. It's a character. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about Booleans and characters in this video, but yeah. These are the four big data types. There's also other things like shorts and longs, which are like integers but, who are, but hold slightly shorter or slightly longer ranges of numbers, respectively. There's also th this thing called the float, which is toward old single precision floating point numbers. If you don't need all the extra precision for some reason or don't want it, it's not like it costs you that much, but hey. A and you might encounter those sometimes, but really, these are the variables you're going to worry about for the most part. And in this video, I'm not even going to talk about Boolean and character, just integer and double. So yeah, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these. And yeah, that's the name. That's And those are all the types you can have. So you got a name for your variable, you got a type. What's the final thing? Final thing, of course, is the value. What do I have in the box? You know, maybe I have some double in there. What is this ridiculous decimal number I have in there? You know, there you go. Pretty straightforward. And the syntax for actually creating a variable, final important thing I want to go over, goes like this. First, you specify the type. If I can actually write that out. So first, you specify what type it is. Then you say, hey, this is the name I want to give it. So you can name it, again, whatever, within those pretty basic naming rules, almost anything you want. And you can leave it here if you want, and just accept whatever value the computer decides to hand you. But if you care about what value is actually stored in it right off the bat, which sometimes you don't, sometimes you do, you can say equals value. And I want to specify that this part right here is actually optional. You don't actually have to have this here. So just for sake of example, let's go ahead and write out an example of this. Good lord. <laughs> just not the best writing, but you get the idea. So I'm going to create integer, because it's definitely the biggest type you use. Int Joe. And I can just hit semicolon in the statement there. I have a variable called Joe, and it has whatever value the computer decides to give me. So in fact, I can just go ahead and print that out. I can say Joe stores and add on Joe to the statement. So, like I discussed earlier, this is just the print statement. So this is going to show me what Joe stores. I'm going to go ahead and run. And, oh, okay, apparently 
Microsoft Visual Studio doesn't like that. But if you're using a compiler which doesn't, you know, care about that, it will give you some, just some ridiculous number. For some reason, it decides that Microsoft Visual Studio decides doesn't like, like you to do that, because, you know, it's generally bad practice to just print out whatever the computer gives you. But hey, that, you know, if it actually did let me, it would just show me some ridiculous number. It would be whatever the computer decided to give me. Don't know why that... Well, yeah, Microsoft doesn't like that, but yeah, you get the idea. I could also, on the other hand, in a way that actually works, assign it to some value like 27. And if I run this, it's going to sort 27 in some box called Joe, and I try accessing that box, predictably, gives me the value stored in the box. So yeah, that's variables. Now, this alone really isn't that useful, is it? I mean, yeah, we can store Joe in, in 27, we can call it whatever we want, but, I mean, we can change the same effect by just replacing that with 27. It doesn't mean much just to store arbitrary information on your computer, unless you just like storing arbitrary information on your computer. So yeah, I could just directly put 27 in there, and it does the exact same thing. So why bother, right? Well, storing information is only half the battle. The other half of the battle is actually processing it. With, yeah, actually processing it. Actually doing something with all this information we're storing. And if I just go ahead and get rid of all of this, wait for paint.net to do its thing, the other half is the operator. We have variables, now there's operators. And operators actually vary with data types. Different types of data have different operators. So, yeah, but operators work something like this. First you have the first thing you want to operate with, then you have the actual operator, except you write T's and not 4's when you spell out operator, and then you have B, the second thing you want to do it with. And A and B can either be variables, or they can just be some number. So if I wanted to do Joe, some operator, and 56, that's just as valid if I, if I create another variable called Jack, and to Joe, operator, Jack. You know, you can have variables be part of this, or they can just be straight up numbers. Doesn't matter, either way, they work. So, you might wonder, what are what are the operators? What can I operate? Syntax is pretty simple, but, you know, what, what, what operators can I do? Well, it depends. For numerical types of so things like integers and doubles, the operators are fairly predictable, actually. You have plus, minus, multiplication, which is done with an asterisk, and, you're never going to guess this one, division, which is done with a backslash. If these are the operators for a numeric type, so like integers and doubles, you can do those. These are the big ones. There's a few others out there, but these are the big ones. And also, just for integer, the only other one I think is worth mentioning, and this one only applies to integers, doesn't work for doubles, is the remainder operator, modulus, which is done with a percent sign. So I should just put the note here, int only, because, you know, modulus only works with integers. I'll talk about that when I get to it, but for the most part, I just want to focus on the four main operators. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So now, I have Joe right here. What if I want to display, you know, I want to do an operation here. Because you can do operations anywhere where you have variables, pretty much. So, I want to do Joe times 27. So, it's already storing 27, so I'm going to do 27 times 27. So, that's going to print out 729. As you see, did the operator. And it's displaying Joe. So yeah, there you go. But I can also get a little more complex than that. I create another variable. I believe I called it Jack earlier, so I'll call it Jack again. I'm not going to assign anything at first. I would say Jack equals, so I'm going to assign it to something. You can assign it pretty much anywhere you want. So I want to say Jack is Joe divided by six. Actually, divided by four. Now nah, just do divided by six. It doesn't matter, but yeah. I can go ahead and add on to this space jack stores jack and now and they'll just display whatever is in jack and oh dear I have two of these that's not good but yeah so go ahead and display this so Joe stores 27 jack stores 4 if it I don't know why it keeps going off screen like that it's kind of annoying but oh well so yeah there you go
and I can also do Joe plus six, Joe minus six. They behave exactly as you'd expect. I'm not going to really show that off. But yeah, you can do operators almost anywhere, so they're a very convenient way of doing things, if I do say so myself. So yeah, the other thing I want to talk about is, again, this modulus operator. It only works on integers. You can do this for doubles, but yeah, you might have noticed something in here. If I'm doing jack divided by six, you know, it's saying Joe, well, Joe divided by six. 27 divided by six, it's saying that's four. Well, that's not quite true, is it? Because four times six, that's not 27, that's 24. What's going on here? As I said, integers, they, can't, they don't store the decimal places. So rather than giving you a decimal answer, what the integers do is they give you a remainder. So yeah, and the way you calculate the remainder instead is I could say, I'll create another integer, because I, I can, and I'll just, I'll just call it g, because, you know, why not? Names aren't too important in this, it's just example code, but yeah. I can say jack modulus 6, and that'll give me the ram remainder of it. Now I'm just going to add on a, if I can type this out, space, and add on g. So... Jack stores 4, from 8 or 4. So yeah. Apparently that's... Oh, I did Jack remainder 6. That, that's why. One Joe remainder 6. Yeah, so now it makes sense. Now you get 4, so 4 times 6, and you have a remainder of 3. So 24 plus 3 is indeed 27. There you go. That's a modulus operator. And that's something completely different. <laughs> so yeah. That's really the big things I wanted to go over in this video, really. I mean, there are other variables, like I said, there's boolean, there's characters. And they have their own operators, which mostly makes sense for them. Actually, why not? I'll show off the fact that if I use doubles instead, so, you know, just like decimal places, and don't do double int, do actual code, yeah, you notice, first off, this doesn't work because doubles doesn't make sense to have modulus for that. Well, remainder. You get the idea. So, I'm going to get rid of this because Visual Studio is going to crash because for some reason it's decided that's... Oh, okay. Apparently I just built. But yeah. And, yeah. As you can see, now it actually is storing something. Well, it's not storing decimal numbers. I still don't think that's actually correct because... Where is it? I don't know. Actually, that doesn't seem right, doesn't it? What do I say? I'm just... I, I'm being tired. Don't worry about it. But yeah, those are variables. Those are operators. Those are your big... Those are really big, important computation tools. And yeah, they're important to understand if you want to do anything in C++, because anytime you want to store information, you do it with some variable of some kind. Anytime you want to do some computation, you do it with some operator of some kind. Those are the big tools in C++. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we'll talk a little bit more about this stuff. See you then.